means that no organization can be successful in the future. No organization can attract customers. No organization can attract employees if they're not becoming part of the solution and not part of the problem. And we see this across every industry today. For example, we see this incredible shift away from internal combustion, where 10 years ago, electric cars were a little bit of a pipe dream and a little bit of a fad. The reality today is that 20% of new cars in Europe now come with a plug. Jaguar will be an all-electric car brand from 2025. And big brands like Ford are investing billions in completely retooling their factories to build electric cars. But it's not just about the environment. It's all about our money and what we do with it. Because we see that today in Russia. And we see suddenly BP and Shell have woken up 25 years later and realized maybe supporting the food regime wasn't a good idea. The EU is phasing out the support of Russian oil. And the addiction to oil has paid for the war. So people are realizing today that it's not just about the environment, it's also about our money. It's about the people we do business with and the need for us all to be better and be responsible. But there is opportunity here in so many different ways. And the third aspect of this is that shift from XYZ Co to TechCo, that digital and technology transformation. Because every business I speak today, be it a bank, be it a telco provider, be it an automobile provider, everybody suddenly wants to become a technology business. And it's no surprise, because the reality today is that the barriers to entry have become so much lower. And as Satya Nadella famously said, every business will become a software business. And suddenly everybody wants to be agile, data-driven, you know, technology driven, great user experiences. But the reality is that if every business has become a software business, then the barriers to entry have become so low that everybody can compete with you, as we saw with the banking example earlier. And so the need for organizations to think like technology companies and to act like technology companies has never been more urgent. And if I show you the numbers three, one, zero, they probably don't mean much to anybody in this room. But if you work for my bank, China's first digital bank, these numbers mean a lot. Because what my bank has done is they recognize there's a huge opportunity to, to loan money to small and medium-sized enterprises in China. And over the last 10 years, they've loaned money to over 20 million SMEs across China. But the reality is that the majority of banks in China are not able or willing to loan money to these companies because the credit history is not there, because the understanding of it is not there. But the reality about my bank is that it's linked to Alibaba and Alipay. And so the truth is that they now have data over 900 million consumers and they can see the spending patterns across their economy. And they use over 2,500 data points to, to drive an algorithm to actually help them understand the credit worthiness of people who are applying for loans, which has created that 310 model, where people can complete their online loan applications in three minutes, they can obtain an approval in one second with zero human interaction. And for the finance people in the room, my bank has a default rate of less than 1% which is just remarkable. And so the fourth big trend is workplace innovation and the future of work. Because as we said earlier, things that seemed impossible two years ago became very possible very quickly when the COVID-19 pandemic hit. Previously, companies expected that the transition to remote working would take at least one year and closer to 18 months. On average, most organizations transition to remote work in less than two weeks when the pandemic hit. So things that seemed impossible became possible very quickly. But one of the big trends and one of the big conversations that we hear is around the automation of work, the digitalization of work. AI is going to take our jobs. And you heard Aruna earlier say, talk about one example about how you know, using AI saved them 8,000 man hours of processing invoices and receipts, which is wonderful, but it's also terrifying at the same time. Because the reality, though, is that it's not about the machines or us. It's not an either-or equation. The reality is that the future of work really requires us, requires us to become transdisciplinary learners that are operating at this intersection of both human and digital technologies. Because when we talk, talk about the past and the earlier industrial revolutions, people employed what they call people in the eye shape world, where everybody was really good at doing one thing. And if you were standing on your factory assembly line, I did this, and then you did that, and then the next person did their thing. But then with computerization came the desire for a T-shaped person, somebody who was able to maintain their discipline expertise within their, of expert, within their particular area, but were able to interact and work with people around them. Where we're headed today is what we call the X-shaped model, where people really sit at that intersection of human and machine capabilities. The rise of superheroes in the future, with the idea that everybody that we know, every job that we're going to do, is going to be augmented by technology in one way or another. And what Maruna was talking about, the best example of that, is that 
the technology hasn't replaced the need for a CEO or a CEO, CFO or anybody else, but they're empowered with their new technology to the access around the world, to have saved our lives, saved our livelihoods, and saved our ways of life. And so things that seemed impossible, unthinkable two years ago, have suddenly become commonplace. So let's talk a little bit about change. Because we expect the world to change at a certain speed over time. But the reality is that technology is changing faster than we expect, which creates a real challenge for us. Because communication speeds are doubling every nine months. Storage capacity is doubling every 13 months. And processing power is doubling every 18 months. And so we see this incredible curve and this gap between the reality of what's happening to the technology and our expectations. And of course, the acceleration that we've seen around COVID-19. So what's changed? So for me at Coursera, we, we work with over 100 million learners around the world to help them build skills for the future of business and the future of work. And so I speak to companies all over the world, you know, understanding from them what's happening for them, what are the big trends, what's really shifting their industries. And in addition, with Coursera, we recently released our Global Skills Report, which aggregates the data from over 100 million learners around the world to better understand what are the biggest skills that are trending and growing and what are the different areas of the world, the different countries of the world, where we're seeing this advancement. And it's a great report and a lot of information about the Middle East and Africa as well, with a special focus on the UAE and Saudi Arabia and really encouraging to learn about it. So when we think about what's changed, when I speak to our customers, we see four key trends that are reshaping every industry. The first of these is new customer expectations, in terms of what customers expect from the brands they interact with. The second of these is a greater responsibility. Because today, no organization can be successful without understanding the responsibility they have to their employees, to society, and to the world at large. The third of these is this shift from XYZ code to tech code, where every company today wants to become a technology company. And the fourth is workplace innovation, the way in which work has changed. So let's talk about these in a bit more detail. So the first of these is new customer expectations. Now, I'm a marketer at heart. I spent most of my career working in marketing. And one of the things we talk about is habit. Because habit is a really powerful driver of consumer behavior. Because the reality is that once people get used to doing things mm. in a certain way, it's very hard for them to change. Mm. We get comfortable with brands. We get comfortable with aspects of our lifestyle. And we forgive brands for the occasional mistakes. Because the pain of change is just too hard. But the reality is that people do change. And when things happen in your life that change, like changing your job, moving country, moving city, and of course the biggest change, babies. It's ripe opportunities for disruption. But in reality, we haven't seen anything like we've seen in the last two years, where every aspect of our lives, how we live, how we shop, how we work, how we bank, everything has been fundamentally changed by COVID-19. And today, there's a higher expectation from consumers on the quality of the experience that brands can deliver for us. Because the reality today is that we've spent the last two years on Netflix, Amazon, Uber, Kenny. So we know what good looks like today. And we expect every brand to be that good. And we expect every brand to provide these incredible experiences for us. And so today we say that experience is everything. And this shift in experiences has created new modes of design and new ways of working and new ways of experiencing things. And every company in the world, especially software companies, technology companies, that are cash rich, data rich, technology rich, and know how to design great customer expectations are coming for your industry. And so today, Apple has a credit card. Apple has suddenly become a financial services provider. Google has offered Googleplex, which is everything a bank dreams that their mobile app could be. Because the reality is that Google has deeper data resources, deeper technology resources, and better user experience design resources than any bank could provide. And these provide real opportunities for disruption for every industry today. But banks are trying to respond. And a great example of this is Bo, which is a digital challenger bank that NatWest was created in the UK back in 2019. They got a design agency, they paid them a fortune, and they designed this new brand that was going to be driven by this wonderful app, and everything was going to be great. They launched the app, and do you know what? It sucked. The user experience was awful. There was no fingerprint, there was no Apple Pay. All these kind of basic things people expect from their banking apps today weren't available. And six months after launch, it was dead on arrival. They closed Bo and shut the doors. And so the reality is there is a need for everybody to compete and to challenge and to innovate, but design and great experiences at the heart of this. And so what we see today, when we look at our job skills of 2022 report, which we released recently, the experience economy is driving this demand for great product design and great user experience design. 
And if you look at the top trending digital skills on Coursera over the last year, product design is number one, and user experience design is number three. So there's a real demand today to design great customer experiences. back to our job skills of 2022 report, if we look at the top trending human skills, what we see here is skills like communication, change management, professional development, storytelling, have never been more important and have never been more valuable. So it's not an either or. The reality is we, in the future we are not going to be able to beat the machines and the machines are not going to be able to beat us. We are going to have to find a way for us all to get in. And so really what I'm talking about today is not the skills for the future of work, the skills for the future life, it's skills for the future of everything. Because these 14 trends are not only reshaping every industry, they're reshaping our future. And if we think about those skills, new customer experiences, a greater responsibility, that shift from XYZ Eco to Tenco, that shift to work with workplace innovation, what are the use cases that we're seeing in these particular areas? So when we talk about new customer expectations, we're talking about the creation of great omni-channel experiences that seamlessly blend online and offline and deliver great services 24-7. We're talking about product development, creating new ways to create value and new ways to be able to compete with the disruptors. We're talking about entrepreneurship, the importance for organizations to be entrepreneurial within the organization to find these new modes of value creation and the need for partnership because no company has all the answers today. So how can you collaborate with people within your industry and outside your industry to build the best possible experiences for your customers? And that's where skills like marketing, service design, product management, entrepreneurship, and collaboration become so important when developing skills for your workforce. And, and when we think about a greater responsibility, first it's about the importance of the need to lead by example. What can you do as an organization to identify every step of your value chain where you can be more sustainable, where you can be more responsible? How can you pivot intentionally into scalable, sustainable opportunities? How can you champion clean technologies? How can you champion financial inclusion? How can you champion digital technology and democracy and give people access to the internet no matter where they are? And that's where skills like sustainability, renewable and clean technologies, innovation, the growth mindset become so important. And when we talk about the shift from XYZ code to techno, the core IT transformation, the importance of data and cloud, the modular IT, IT architecture that exists to underpin every organization today, and the importance of AI and machine learning. And that's where skills like cloud and data are at the heart of every disruption and also every opportunity. AI and machine learning, automation, software engineering, and software architecture become so important and so valuable. And lastly, workplace innovation. How can we cater for these super jobs where we sit at this intersection of human and digital technologies? How do we find these new ways of working, these new ways of thinking? How can we champion diversity and inclusion to really bring the best people around the world into our organization? And that's where these uniquely human skills like communication, like storytelling, change management, adaptability, and importantly, personal development and learning become just so valuable for what we're trying to achieve and where we're trying to go. So if I leave you with one word today, I'd like that word to be hope. Because I really think what we've done as a human race, what we've all done as people over the last two years is really remarkable. And I think as we all sat at home on Teams, on Zooms, in our bedrooms, in our kitchen tables, and our children and our cats were walking behind us on video conferences, I think we all learned to see each other to be a little bit more human. And I think what we've realized is that none of us are immune from the effects that everybody else can have. And we see the impact that a pandemic can have on the entire world, that what happens in China can touch us everywhere in the world, and vice versa. And so that need for us to become more human has never been more important, and that need to really take care of each other and be responsible for this world around us, and the tools and the technology the data that we have is literally limitless today. And the trick is, what are we actually going to do with that today? And so at Coursera, I'm really proud of what we're trying to do to help build those skills for the future, to help create more employability, to create more inclusion for people. And I really hope that you walk away from this talk feeling a little bit inspired, a little bit motivated, a little bit more willing to be part of that solution. And so I hope you've enjoyed that, and I hope you've enjoyed my talk.